Hello, welcome to another episode of The Discussion. I'm Luke. I'm Ian. Uh, this time we're changing the format a little bit. We're going to change this to a weekly podcast. The videos will be up the week after after this week. Yep. This week they're both going up together. Uh-huh. Next week it'll be audio only, and the video will be the weekend after with the audio for that week. Yep. All, descri- uh, all descriptions, all links to the podcast will be in the description below, as well as... Links to the trailers for everything we're going on about today. Yep, because this week we're talking about films. Yes, and also this week, if any of you checked out our E3 specials, we were hit with several copyright claims. So, trailers. No more will trailers. Now, yeah, trailers will now be linked in the description. Uh, first one we watched for this month, the four we're going through will be Great Wall, which I thought was awesome, but. Matt Damon. <laughs> Matt Damon. Yeah, I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> uh, yes, Great Wall, The Mummy, Wonder Woman, and uh, King Arthur, Legend of the Sword. Yeah, we were also going to do Baywatch, but no, neither of us could bring ourselves to actually go and watch it. No. Nope. I uh, saw the trailers and no. Uh, it won't always, when we're doing these ones, they won't always be brand new films. Sometimes we'll be going over old films and they We'll be going to the most discussion because we'll be talking about what we would have done. Yes. Because um, we're smart asses. Um. This is a this is going to be a month, I think. So the new format is as follows. You're stuck with me every Wednesday and Saturday for TD News Network. On Saturday, I'll be joining you for Don- Donnie's Tiny Tweets. You can check out a comedian called Jimmy Dore to find out where I got that from. Yep. On Mondays will be uh, the discussion top five. Which, posted by me which you lucky, will be random. lucky people it'll be random subjects every week some of it might be top 5 games top 5 myths top 5 facts it, it could be anything if you've got any ideas for a top 5 list you want to see you want us to look into hit us up in the comments and I'm sure Luke will be more than happy to uh, oblige I'll see what I can do but don't give me silly things you give me silly things I'm just going to abuse you on Twitter yeah uh, also hit us up on any of the social media that's linked down below now, as for, per the discussion, it's going to be a weekly podcast with the video the following week, as yep. said. Once a month, we will do an entertainment special, yep. which is today. And the rest of it will be current affairs. Stuff that's in the news or been in the news or, well, it could whatever, just be random things. Yeah, whatever we come up with that week. Yeah. Um if you've got any ideas, anything you want us to go through again, hit us up on the so comments. You post the people when I go through a YouTube bender and find random things. Yeah. Now, to get on to today's. As I said, we're starting off with a great wall this week, mostly because it was the one we both liked the most. Yep, yeah, it's the one I've now watched. In fact, I think we've both watched twice. Yes. Yep, Matt Damon and... I can't remember the actor's name, to be fair, but any of you that watch Game oh, of Thrones... Oh, bro, from Game of Thrones. Yeah. Um, definitely, definitely a good actor. Um, we have a fly in the studio, you'll have to excuse me. Don't swap the fly, just shoot away. Go away. Yes. Um, now, we watched this one a couple of weeks ago. Yep. Um, when it first came out? Yeah. Now... This is the only film that we actually watched well in advance before we decided to yeah. do this. Uh, we decided to do this last week and it was kind of, right, we've got to fit every film. Uh, I spent a lot of time at the cinemas. <laughs> um, well, we both did, but... Yeah. Now, Great Wall, I've got to say, for a change, it's kind of... <laughs> it's an action film that Matt Damon's been in, but not like other action films that he's been in I mean the he's Bourne, not playing the spy or the thief yeah or... I mean the Bourne Identity and the Bourne well the Bourne series the Oceans trilogy yeah he's playing the same kind of character whether it's thief or spy or assassin yeah. or whatever uh, this one he was a pure on action film where he, he plays I won't say jaded he he played more of an anti-hero role yeah he, but... he wasn't the best of people but he was there when he was needed yeah um, and spoiler alerts we won't try not to go too much into the plot but we might end up giving away It'll one or two things be more us talking about what we liked and disliked yeah. about the film 
Now, to be fair, I mean, with this film... Um, You're I'm, not big on fantasy, which made me stranger why you like this one so much. Yeah, um, I'm not a big fantasy film fan. I'm not a Lord of the Rings fan. Um, Either. Don't get me wrong, the battle scenes in Lord of the Rings, yeah, quite good. Some of the graphics and stuff that they did in it, epic. 2002! Yeah, now, to bring in, bringing me on to graphics for this, uh, the CGI and everything they did in this film, I've got to rate, I'd say they've got an 8 out of 10. Mm. It, they obviously put a lot of time, effort and money into the graphics. Yeah. Uh, the CGI characters were brilliant and not only that, how they did... Some of the stunts and everything in it were, it was obviously a mix of stunt performers and certain CGI things, especially for, I won't say what it is, but for the women. See, that's a weird one, because watching as much um, Eastern cinema as I have, I know how they'd have pulled that off. They weren't hiding the fact they were pulling it off, though, because obviously, uh, say films like uh, Crush Tiger and Dragon, yeah, uh, where they're flying across the forest, that was a practical done effect. Yeah, with wire work, and it, they weren't hiding the wire work in this because the wire work was part of how they did what they did. But again, it had been wire work in front of a green screen mm. with computer animation behind because yeah. they never have got them scenes the way that they True. did. True, it was a mixture the, of practical effects on CGI, yeah. but no matter how good your be- your set builders are, you wouldn't have got that. No, uh, you've got to rely on computer graphics for it. But again. It has got a lot of use of computer graphics in the film. Yes. But, to be fair, it's not overly done, like it can be in some films. It's not Avatar level CGI. Yeah. Uh, And to be fair, um, I've got to say, for Matt Damon, it's probably one of the better roles I've seen him in in a long time. I wish you could have decided on an accent, though. Yeah, he kind of has two or three... I'm Scottish, I'm Irish, I'm Northern English. What? Yeah, he has several... Accents throughout the film. Uh, I'm all three of these in one sentence. Yeah. Um, that aside, I still stand by the fact that I think this is one of the better films that Matt Damon's done in a long time. I think to help that if you have a close enough group of friends, you can tell who's who. Yeah. I There are parts where obviously it deviates from how the friendship really is. Like with us, we both kind of went, all right, we're that person, and it was the opposite pers- person each. Yeah. Except I wouldn't have done some of the things that the character would point out was more like me would do. Yeah, there's there was one or two differences in it, but any of you no, that some of the quotes I would do. <laughs> yeah, any like like say anybody that you are a close knit group of four or five friends or anything, you'll identify certain characteristics that apply to you. Mm. The way that they've done it is quite good. I mean, this for me, obviously it's fantasy, so the story behind it isn't believable as such. Um, well, I'd say in parts. The story of the enemy, that the fighting in it isn't believable, but the story of the actual group of soldiers and um, the wall and everything is possible. Everyone's backstory and motivations seem plausible and believable. Yeah. I mean, the actual group that man the wall and everything, it it is sort of plausible that that is. I mean, obviously the way the Great Wall was set up, you had barracks... Barrack towers at certain distances throughout. I mean, yes, the moment we decided we were doing this, he did watch every uh, documentary he could find on the Great Wall of China's building. Yeah, not only that, it's. I mean, I, actually, that wasn't. That was me showing you a TV series on uh, No TV yes. that just happened to be about the Great Wall of China. I mean, I was showing you what I thought was a really yeah. good documentary series, but that aside, obviously, they have kind of stuck to the part where, obviously, with. I mean, what's the the Great Wall of China's a few thousand mile long, is it? Uh, a few five hundred? thousand, five two thousand? hundred and something. Yeah, um, and obviously in parts of this, you're going to have certain parts of the wall that are very isolated, but at, the, at its peak, they were permanently manned. Oh, yeah. So you would have small groups like this that recruit from village, and it's that part of the film is plausible. I mean, between that and obviously this is... For me, I think this is the, f- as far as I'm aware, this is the first time that Matt Damon's worked with a non-Hollywood company. Yeah. I mean, it, it is completely, it's an Eastern I, filming company, an Eastern production company. It's kind of, it's brought to the West known as by Legendary. Yeah. And Legendary's well known if you watch the Batman series, if you watched um, 
some more fans fantastical kind of things like but they are obviously they also own the Nerdist and Geek and Sundry, so you see them every time you what put on YouTube and nerd out. Yeah, but it's like I said, I mean the production teams, everybody, it was all Eastern companies. Yeah. It was all It was all Chinese company. Ninety percent Chinese. Uh, there were some other companies. I mean obviously they have US and other Western distribution, yeah. like you said, but it's Personally, I'd love to see a behind the scenes from it because I think this is going to be the w- the first time to be fair that Matt Damon's actually been shown what it's really like to be on the set of a proper film, not a Hollywood CGI, cheesy graphics, stuntmen doing everything I, for you. I don't know because I, I think there may have been some of the realism for him when he was doing his very first film. Remind me. Uh, not talented Mr. It might, it might be the talented Mr. Ripley. So either the talented Mr. Ripley, or it was. Now I remember him doing the one with Ben Affleck yeah. where he was the nerd. Yeah, that's. He played the janitor that. that was really good with the maths, and I can't remember it. Wow, the film geeks Hunting. Really this. Goodwill Hunting. That's something there. We are. Um, yeah, but again, Goodwill Hunting. Yeah, not an action thing. Now with Eastern filming companies and production companies and everything. The actors tend to do a lot of the stunts themselves. Yes. Obviously, not really stupid stuff, but... Unless I'd say, you're Jackie Chan. Yeah. I'd say in the Born Identity and in the Oceans mm. uh, series, and I think, yeah, some of the small stunts might have been done by the cast. I know George Clooney has a thing about doing a few of his own stunts, but for the most part, the majority of the stunts would have been done by body doubles and stunt yeah. performers. That's not the way things work with... Eastern made films. No, they tend to be much more. They do have a stunt team, but the stunt team tend to play the background characters as well. Yeah, you tend to find that in Eastern films, I mean, especially all the Jackie Chan's films, the the actual characters and everything are cast because from stuntmen. Yeah. I know with Jackie Chan, he runs uh, He's on Team Jackie company. Chan. Well, he, he runs his own stunt team and yeah. has done for many years, Ch- uh, Team Jackie Chan. I, I'm sure it's called Team Jackie Chan, but obviously a lot of them, um, a lot of production companies approach the actual Team Jackie Chan company and say, right, we need actors for this, 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 and this role. Yeah. And yet they do all the stunts, but they also play the acting part of it. So most of them are good actors, or not, if you're not into that kind of filming, obviously. The Eastern filming genre is there's a big difference between that and the high production yeah, I, Hollywood I, I think you kind of have to have done what I did which is grow up with the cheesy 80s mixture and the Bruce Lee films because anyone yeah. that says Bruce Lee's terrible films I will fight you yes. I will fight you and I will beat you <laughs> but I mean for people that like the the eastern way of filming and um, the Eastern genre, I mean, old Jackie Chan films. Yeah, Jackie Chan's done the the later films with Chris Rock and everything else. Not Chris Rock. I know who you mean. Rush Hour and his yeah, name the, is the, beyond he's me. He's done the Rush Hour films. Yeah. He's done um, but, The Tuxedo with yeah. Jennifer Garner and uh, that was accidental, horrible. Accidental Spy. See, Accidental Spy is a weird one because it was done in China and... Uh, not Vietnam, Thailand. But it was produced by an American production yeah. company and everything, so it was all, it was glamorised, it was the Hollywood side of things, but to be fair, I really do like some of Jackie Chan's older films, I, I like Bruce Lee's older films, I do like that kind of thing, and seeing Matt Damon in that kind of role actually made me think, uh, you know, this guy can sort of act, Yeah. and he does hold his own throughout the film. Um, again, I can't remember the actor's name, but the guy who, pay, who plays his friend in it, again, Research holds time. his own. He does hold his own, and he is he is a good actor. And um, Willem Dafoe. Well, William Dafoe's William, William Dafoe. Dafoe. <laughs> yeah, he does, he's, well, in a world of his own, 90% of the time, he's kind of the Ozzy Osbourne without the drugs, but still as if he's drugged up. Which is kind of weird, but it's Pedro Pascal. Pedro Pascal. There you go. Anybody who's not seen the film or wants to know who he is, look up Game of Thrones. He uh, plays... Great Venezuelan actor. Yeah, uh, he is 
I mean, the first time I ever saw him in, a fil- in anything was Game of Thrones. I've seen I, him in one or two I things I have a feeling since. I've seen him in things beforehand, just not recognise him because... Yeah, I heard we could quite possibly watch some older films and think, oh, the the because tend different- to do that a lot with pe- especially people of up and coming, like their their um, career actors rather than AAA actors. Mm-hmm. They're the ones that they work for four or five films a year plus two se- television series. Yeah, um- they're the ones that are pretty much constantly on a film set because they need to make money to live. Yeah. Um- Finger Henley. Uh, Lena Henley. Lena Henley. Um, Up until Game of Thrones was the same way. Yeah, and but you look back at her previous film credits and she's been in some big yeah. films. You just didn't quite put two and two together and then you look and you're like, oh, you do what I did and you're like, oh, Wikipedia, da da da. Oh. She was in that. She oh, in that. Yeah. 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 And then you think back to the film or you watch the film and you're like, oh, yeah. I mean, sure, I did the same thing with Guy Pearce where there's a older film well I say older it's 2013 I think maybe 2014 um, he goes up to space station he has to break get present daughter out blah 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 the whole pretense of the film it's kind of a kind of future it's kind of another a different take on an Escape from LA basically yeah an Escape from New York um, kind of different take on it but and it's like why do I know him? I'm sure I've seen him in things before. And then I'm looking through his past credits and it's things like, oh, he's in Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. And yes, anyone that has a go with me about that, I will fight you for that one as well. <laughs> yeah. But obviously, we'll get back to get back to the film. I mean, Great Wall of China. Uh, sorry, The Great Wall. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say, I mean, I personally liked it, but I'd say... If you're not into the Eastern style of filming and mm. that sort of legend stuff and like you said with legendary, um, then maybe it's not going to be your cup of tea. It's Eastern style I, filming I without subtitles. I'd recommend giving it a watch when it's on Netflix or something. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely worth a watch, but if you're not keen on it, I wouldn't say go out and spend your money before watching it first. Yeah, if you're not into that sort of filming... Um, not just the production of it, but the filming style and everything else. There is some subtitles, but not a lot. Yeah. Majority of it is in English with subtitles for the Chinese parts of it, or the Mandarin parts, or... Cantonese. Cantonese. But... I think they speak in Mandarin, but, but I'm that rusty on yeah. both of them. It's horrible. I don't I never know got that, I never got that far into either room anyway, but... But if you're into that sort of filming definitely check it out I mean personally I give it 4 out of 5 same definitely worth watching if that's your sort of thing there are one or two small letdowns in the film but all in all it has good action it has good production the filming style camera style and everything on it is aerated for me the CGI is good it has the comedy value it's just there's a few parts that let it down along the way but you'll see that if you go and watch it now for the only one we disagree on King Arthur Legend of the Sword right yes and I say we disagree because I, I it, for me it's a second 4 out of 5 for you it's a 3 out of 5 yeah and I think that comes down to the more what you disliked about it made it a better film for me yeah uh, I mean with this one it's got um Jude Law and Charlie. Yeah. Charlie uh, Henderson. I'm not 100% sure of his surname, but he's... Yes, we're doing research as well. Yeah. Um, Shush. We've got Jude Law that plays a brilliant role in it. Um, a spot-on role, actually. Um, we've got Charlie, who's... I mean, past credits, uh, um, Sons of Anarchy, Sons of Anarchy uh, Queer as Folk. Queer as Folk. Um, Charlie Hunnam. Charlie Hunnam. Uh, uh, Sons, Sons of Anarchy. Anarchy, Pacific Rim, Crimson Peak. He was in Green Street. Yeah, I and that. one that most people probably won't know him from, but if you were a big fan of the show way, 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 way back, he got his start in Biker Grove. So he did. Yes. 98. Well, to be fair, he's a Geordie. Yes. <laughs> 
Um, so I think yes, most Geordie actors come from there. Good friends with Anton Deck. Got his start at the same time as Anton Deck. Went a little quiet after well, Biker Grove. No, where after Anton Biker Deck, Grove, he went on to Queer as Folk and then didn't work for two years. Yeah, not to mention he disappeared over to America where uh, Anton yeah. Deck made it big on Saturday Night Things. But it's one of his... See, it's... I'll put it this way. It's storyline solid. Yeah. It's a new take on the old way of the idea that King Arthur was uh, an orphan boy that he didn't, he didn't know his past until he pulled the sword from the stone. Yeah. And it's a new take on that, making it him the reluctant king instead. Yeah. Um, uh, which I thought was amazing. Yeah. Again, I've got to say, storyline behind it, yeah, solid. Actors, brilliant. Can't fault any of them. Even the lesser known actors that were in it, everybody put a good show on. It had the comedy aspect it was the way it was filmed for me. Yeah. Um, now, don't get me wrong. At the beginning I mean, of the film, they skip, where they skip through, obviously, the beginning of the film, they give you the main part of the training backstory. And, and then he's training. The montage that they do to bring him from being a boy to an old man, yeah, no problem with that. That was a really good way of getting I mean, the backstory in without dragging it out. It's weird. I, the thing that I like the most about the entire, that entire sequence is, yeah, okay, you've got the Rocky kind of training montage and the, from going to getting himself beaten up to beating up people. Yeah, and becoming... Who, and def, uh, becoming is, a bit of a defender. Yeah. And looking after the people that he thinks he's... It, you know, they are of his, as of the thinking, he thinks of as his charges. Yeah, uh, um, he's what he thinks of as <laughs> a family. But my favourite part for that was they managed to get Tom Wu involved. Yeah. Which, if you've ever watched Marco Polo on Netflix, it's uh, the blind, it's Thousand Eyes, Hundred Eyes. I, um, it it was been good. in a lot of different things. Like, I, like Bulletproof Monk, he was the master right at the beginning of Bulletproof Monk. Yeah, briefly. Uh, another film that I watched a couple of days ago. <laughs> but, yeah, that that sort of montage, the training montage and everything where they brought him from being a child and they managed to get him to being an adult in a very short amount of time. Brilliant way of doing mm. it. Don't get me wrong, love it. It saves half hour of the film and you're getting yep. bored. Um, what I didn't like was that they carried that on throughout the film, skipping, but using it to skip back in time to certain things and certain memories and then skip forward and then he was in a different part of the story. And I mean, there is one part where he's doing a voiceover as if he's talking to the group, but it's showing other parts of the film. And then you're kind of like, right, uh, is this what's already happened or is this what's going to happen? And for me, it was... I prefer films where you can just sit there and you can watch the and you don't is, have to is, think hard about them. I like it, but I like it because I it, I already knew it was being directed by Guy Ritchie. It's a very Guy Ritchie thing to do. He did it in Snatch, he did it in Lockstock. That kind of... They're talking about how things will be going if you go a certain way. And it shows it on the screen. And it shows it on it. the screen, it does it. Uh, it's a very Guy Ritchie kind of thing to do. He did in Revol- like I said, he did in Lockstock, he did in Snatch, he did in Revolver. Uh, and I liked those films. Don't get me wrong, I like um, Lockstock and I like Snatch. Uh, I, I do, but I just don't think it went too well with that film. That's my personal thing. I, with that, I mean, the Lockstock and everything else, yeah, I enjoyed them. And to be fair, it wasn't one that you had to you had to think about because yeah they were explaining things uh, this is what happens if you do it this way and it goes through but it was easy to follow where with this they're doing it about a legend they're explaining key parts of the film and you're having to listen to everything he's explaining and then getting confused because it's showing di- something different on the screen at times well I mean this is the part where I have to go they're doing it about a legend that's weird anyway because it's it's set in what they still call Londinium which for anyone that doesn't know is the Latinized name for London when the Romans first arrived. So they're still doing it in Londinium, so London, so you're looking at a bit of a, you know, Cockney Street, right kind of thing. Uh, and, you know, he's supposed to become the King of England, and the time period that, it's supposed to be, that the original legend was set in, um, the 6th century, anyone called a Briton, because Britain no longer existed, Britannia, it was Briton, and the Britons were the Welsh. And there's a lot of evidence backing up that if Arthur existed, he would have been Welsh. It's just the Welsh refused to admit it. <laughs> but, by the by, yeah, it might have been a weird legend, but I just didn't like the way that they they went about it. Other than that, 
solid acting. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Charlie actually managed to do a relatively good Cockney accent. Considering he's a Geordie. Yep. Jude Law in it. Brilliant. Um, Jude Law should play more bad guys. Yeah. <laughs> he, um, he's a very intimidating character when he's he, playing like that. He really is. And the way that he the way that he went about playing that character oh, yeah, was I like brilliant. The, I like that he's getting into these more serious roles because obviously he started on things like Alfie. Yeah. And he... And, um, that kind of, oh, look at me, I'm a pretty boy, I'm a playboy, but... And then all of a sudden, Repo Man came out. And it's like, right now, I'm a serious actor, I'm going to play serious roles, and I'm going to play... I'm going to do them really well. And as yeah. he, And this film shows he... Going from, like, Repo Man to this film, his acting is getting better and better. And yeah, and he is a good actor, and he... This film's no different. He acted in it brilliantly. He played a brilliant character. It's... It's one of them. It's very similar to Game of Thrones. He I mean, made you hate him, and yes. that was a good thing. Same as Joffrey and Ramsay in Game of Thrones. You and actually again, Lena hated Henny. them. Yeah, Lena Henny has been approached in the street as one call they're a bitch. You, you, in that in that show, you're a bitch. Thank you. Yeah, it just shows you how good an actor she yeah, is. Yes, it is. And Jude Law follows the exact same way. He plays a brilliant bad guy in it. He's sound and solid acting. No problems with that. No problems with Charlie's. Even the supporting cast and crew that were on it, the supporting cast, sorry, that were playing other roles, the comedian roles, even the kid that plays in it and everything, mm. it is brilliant. And I like the premise of it, and I do think that all in all, it was a half-decent film, hence why I've given it three stars. The reason I've only given it three out of five is purely the way that they go about it, because it was a film that I ended up having to watch twice because I missed key parts, because... Where he put the montages in it, it was showing something different than it was saying. I mean, it's bad when I watched it and then I had to go back and pay again to watch it again because I, it is a weird purely I, for this. I like because I'm so used to Gary Richards filming, I was kind of expecting it anyway. Whereas I went into it not knowing who the director was, yeah. to be fair. I knew who was starring in it, but I didn't know the director. I mean, the only reason I think I knew it is because there's been talk that after finishing. King Arthur, The Legend of the Sword. That's why I knew the Garish was going to go back and do um, Thingy 2. Train Spotting 2? No. No? That was David Lynch. Oh. Um, not another film that I didn't watch. Yeah. Uh, no. I uh, showed it to you a few months ago. It was the gangster film. Uh, had uh, Jared Butler in it and Tom Hardy. No, not springing to mind. I'll think about it, or if I'll, well, yeah, yeah. Well, could, because that's the only reason I knew it was Guy Ritchie. So I'd actually go in, my mind is knowing it was Guy Ritchie film. So I was expecting scenes where it's like, okay, now we're doing this as I'm telling you about this, and then we'll cut back to me telling you about this face to face, and then we'll go back to the and yeah, as it, I was expecting that to happen because I knew it was a Guy Ritchie film, so it never drew it away from me. So, all in all, we'd have to say. I'd give it three out of five. You give it four out of five. For me, good solid acting, but I'd have to say, unless you're a fan of Guy Ritchie and the way that he directs, it'd be one to wait till it comes on Now TV and Netflix. If you're a big fan of Guy Ritchie, then definitely one to go and one to go and watch. I mean, I do believe it's coming on the. If you've got Sky TV, it's coming on the uh, Sky Store probably quite soon uh, on the buy to keep stuff um, so yeah if it's if Guy Ritchie's films are your sort of thing definitely want to go and watch if not give it a miss for the minute catch it when it comes up on no TV and things yep. like that now for a little more divisive one and I don't mean divisive between the two of us I mean it's been in the news is a little bit more divisive um, that's Wonder Woman yeah it's it's had some good, some bad press. Some people like it, some people don't, and they don't like what it represents. Yeah. Personally, I mean, we both give this a three out of five. Yep. It's good, um, solid film. Yeah, it was nothing wrong with the film as per se for me. Um, superhero film, which some of them I don't mind. I don't. I tend not to mind the Marvel side of things. You've never been a big DC fan. Though, no, um, I've never really been a big Batman fan. I mean, I watched. Um, Christian Bale as Batman. I watched his, found him a little bit weird. Um, and for me, the side of things, as daft as this sounds, 
but as much as a lot of the superhero films that have been coming out these days have a sort of sense of believability about yeah. them. Um, I mean, take Christian Bale's Batman, for instance. He manages to become Batman because of the... Um, money. Yeah, the money and um, the the unused technology from Wayne, Wayne Enterprises. So, yeah, that side of it. Um, with Wonder Woman, for me, though it was a good, solid film, they, there was parts that were a little bit too far-fetched for my likings. A good, solid film. I mean, the actresses and actors in it, brilliant. Gal Gadot in her first major screen role in the West was amazing. Yeah, she did. Uh, coming from a model background. Yeah, to be fair... Very few actresses who used to be models uh, can manage pull off this kind, of, this kind of thing. I mean, let's be fair, Prince of Persia and Gemma Atherton. Um, Baywatch and every female actress in it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's... She she has done well, though. Um, the supporting actors in it, brilliant. Um I don't want to spoil it. There's two really good supporting actors, actors, sorry, that uh, for me seem to be there to give the comic relief of it, yeah. and they do it brilliantly. Yes, uh, the way the they go about it perfectly is brilliantly, timed, perfectly placed. executed. It's all in all, like we keep saying, good solid film. It, the reason it didn't score more than three with me was there was parts of it that were just a little bit too unbelievable for me. As daft as that sounds for superhero films, I mean, the Marvel films, Captain America and quite a few, would never be believable. But, I mean, to be fair, of most of the Marvel ones, Captain America, Thor, uh, the Hulk, all right, none of it's much believable. I mean, the Hulk ones, it's just bash everything and blow things up. That's brilliant. I love that kind of stuff. Four, he hits everything with a blunt hammer. Brilliant. And you, no matter how serious it is, it's funny. Yeah. Like, um, with the coffee cup. What is this drink? Coffee. I like it. Bring me more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and to be fair, Captain America, really unbelievable. It seems to be anything where they have a certain shield but re uh, quite unbelievable. I wasn't a You're fan. You're going to hate the Black Panther film. <laughs> I wasn't a big fan of the Captain America part of the Avengers, but the Avengers film as a whole, brilliant. I mean, puny god, Hulk. <laughs> that scene is just awesome. But for this, like I said, it, it wasn't really my cup of tea. Um, I did think it was a solid film. I think it was well made. It was well directed. Great actress and great actors they really did go out on the casting i thought it was brilliant i mean especially with um what's its face coming over from the star trek films into chris this pine. chris pine that's it i knew his name was chris but i couldn't think of his thing it i nearly called him chris evans for some reason but yeah chris pine coming in from the star trek films coming into this brilliant he he manages to switch well i'd not so much switch he he it, plays the role very similar see, to he plays this, his Star Trek which role. Which is one of my major complaints about it. Because, though, yes, he's a very good actor. He's been in other things. But he he has a certain charm and confidence about him when he's acting. Uh, whether it's James C. Kirk, whether it's um, the character he played in This Is Me's War. It's when it comes to women, he comes off very charming, very confident. Yeah. And in this, he's supposed to be a bit more bumbling, a bit more reserved. And it doesn't seem to work. Yeah. Um, and it's not it's not his fault, I think. I think it's more casting fault because we we expect to see him as confident, as yeah. bolstering, as charming and charismatic. And also he's supposed to be bumbling. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, I think they could have made a better casting. Don't get me wrong, he's a very good actor. He, very, he acts very well in the rest of the film. It's just those small little scenes. Yeah. Um, I'd say my main major complaint about the film that's not so much a complaint is it's very predictable mm. um, the way they go through it the twists in it and everything else though they have put one or two twists in sort of to catch you out they're predictable 
Yeah, the, you, you see the twist coming up on the left. Yeah, it, it is very predictable. The ending... I, th- I think, don't think it helps that ever since Signs, we expect a twist in almost everything. Yeah, so... Not the best, um, but... It, it scaled... It scaled? It scaled... Scored. Scored. Teeth back in the... Nin, 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 nin. Teeth back in and start again. It scored a respectable three from both of us. Yep. Um, from most critics alike, I think it has scored a respectable three out of five across the board, to be fair. Yep. So coming out as a pretty average film, which I'm not 100% sure of its box office scores for its first week. I know it did hit big because it was... Um, it was built up. I think the build up to it might have damaged the film a bit as well, mm. considering the hype and everything that they put behind it, and then the film coming out. Especially considering they managed to do what Marvel hasn't done yet, which is put a woman smack dab in the centre of a superhero film. Yeah, which yeah, obviously Marvel struggling with, but DC for the DC universe, it has done a good thing. Um, I think the hype over it was probably a bit too much. Um, the storyline. Uh, it wasn't the strongest storyline ever mm. it was quite predictable quite unbelievable in certain parts but to be fair for a superhero film for fans of superhero films especially for anybody that's fans of the character. Wonder Woman character it is definitely going to be one to go and watch yep. now obviously as you said at the beginning it has had quite a bit of controversy about it uh, some of it isn't exactly the film's fault like one controversial piece of news I saw was uh, that women that went to see it on opening weekend in the Netherlands were greeted with a sponsorship bag. Yes, yeah, kind of like you get when you go to the Oscars yeah. or whatever else. And yeah, you know, and it was sponsors of the movie, the movie chain, the ha- the movie house chain. Yeah. Uh, and it was cleaning supplies, chocolates. It, that that probably didn't go yeah, well. Yeah, it was very stereotyped. The stereotypical things that, for some reason, everybody seems to think every woman wants and all the rest of it. That, unfortunately, was... Don't get me wrong, I'm sure they love the chocolates, because I would have loved the chocolates. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that was an unfortunate thing. It was a sponsor for the actual cinema itself, not for the film. So it's it's a backlash that the film got, which, unfortunately, it wasn't their fault. It was, it was bad timing and bad taste of the cinema chain yes. at the time. But other than that, it had that little bit of controversy. But all in all, I think it had quite a successful opening weekend, quite a successful opening week. Um, But again, if superhero films aren't your thing, give it a miss. Wait till it comes out on other media. If you're a big fan of Wonder Woman, if you're a fan of DC, if you're a fan of the superhero films, definitely worth worth a check. Mm -hmm. I am... A fan of sorts. I'm not a big nerd geek sort of. Oh, I am. I it, am. It's a guilt. The the are a guilty pleasure of mine, but it's not something I normally go out and seek out. I will watch them when they come out on other media. Please, I don't I've, I've seen your game collection. I'm sure you have a Le- uh, Lego Marvels game somewhere. Um, if I do, it's for one of the retro collections. I've never actually gone out and bought Lego games. Um, sure. I've not. It, <laughs> they're not a thing. I mean. I'm a fan of Lego itself, but I'm not a fan of the game. I'm not a fan of the movies. I can't stand the movies, but that's digressing. Wonder Woman, if you're a fan of the brand, if you're a fan of DC, go check it out. If you're not, wait till it comes out on other media. And now here's where we can get heads in shame as we talk about the first entry in Universal's monster universe. Oh. The Mummy. The Mummy. Now, I have to admit, it got a higher score from me because I I was going in expecting a lot worse. But I was expecting a lot worse because I just looked at it and went, it's Tom Cruise instead of Brendan Fraser. Oh, God, it's going to be a serious film. Yeah. Um, the Mummy cannot be a serious film. Same again from me. Exact same thing. I was going in with um, the Mummy trilogy in my head. Uh, Brendan Fraser, that way of things. The comic relief, the funny part of it with the action. So, I was a little surprised, to be fair, they did, they managed to put a comic relief actor in there yeah, to get a bit of a comedy. Name. They didn't do too bad. Tom Cruise as a whole, mm, not one of his best roles, but 
by far not one of his worst roles either. Um, I give it, uh, yet again, another solid 3 out of 5. Um, good film. Uh, Jack Johnson. No, Jake Johnson. Jake Johnson. Who was, who's in New Girl. So. Yeah, he he's a brilliant... New Girl wasn't really my thing. He is a good actor. He's good. He's funny. Uh, mixed in with Tom Cruise. Um, they did really well. Yeah, it, it's funny because Tom Cruise... The, the way Tom Cruise pull, plays the character he plays, he's not very serious. He's not... Yeah, until it's really... Turned you no know, nose to the grindstone kind of time. Yeah, he's quite lazy affair about everything. Yeah, it, while Jake Johnson does play the straight man, and that's what makes him funny. Yeah, uh, I mean it opens up um, the straight into the comedy quite quickly, which is a good thing for me. It the beginning of it, I struggled to get into it. It dragged out a little bit. Um, I did struggle to settle into it. Once I actually did, it redeemed itself. Good solid score. Yep. They get into the background of of the actual uh, legend. Um, at the same time, obviously, they're trying to get the Monsters universe up and running, bring in... Uh, Jekyll and Hyde. Jekyll and Hyde in with Russell, um, Russell, Russell Crowe. Crow. I nearly said Russell Brand then, a completely different form of acting. Um, with Russell Crowe and Irish was a good way of doing it. Um, to be fair... I hope they do keep Russell Crowe as Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah, props to him that he, he pulled off a good accent. Yeah, and he played the character brilliantly. I mean, for him going from uh, Dr. Jekyll over to Mr. Hyde, it was brilliant. The way that they did it was brilliant. Um, it left it open for that to be one of the yep. next upcoming films. Um, I'm looking forward to that. I hope they do keep the same acting. Uh, my biggest complaint with the film itself is not actually with the film. My biggest point complaint is with the criticisms of the film. Because, okay, yes, like I said, it's got a higher score for me because I went in expecting the worst. Yeah. But one of the major criticisms I've seen of the film is it's just, you know, the bad guy trying to get on top of Tom Cruise. Yeah. When, okay, let's be fair, the first Mummy film was basically the bad guy trying to get on top of, uh, what's her face? Yeah. It, that Rachel is some, Wise. That is something that's kind of gone along with the with the the franchise of The Mummy from start to... This. It's not a case of get on top of this person. It's a case of let's bring this person that I'm in love with back. Yeah, well, and we just so happen to be using you. Whereas in this film, it's not that. No, it's she's trying to. They brought it back. It's she's not trying to mount him. She's not trying to pin him and get on top of him. She's not trying to get away with him. She's trying to do something else. Um, she's not bringing back a long lost love. She's trying to finish a bargain that she struck. Yep. And this is all explained fair, in the first five minutes. Not yeah. exactly big spoilers. <laughs> to be fair, um, there's only two scenes where she's trying to get on top of Tom Cruise. And it's not in the sexual manner. No. At least not in the traditional sexual manner of trying to get her him to penetrate her. Yeah. It's. She's trying to penetrate him with a knife. Yeah. Um, and there's only two fingers of that, so the criticism it got for that, I think, was a bit unneeded and misplaced. I think one of the major reasons that it, it's considered a box office flop is because it's not got Brendan Fraser in it. And yeah. Everyone wanted Brendan Fraser to come back. I want Brendan Fraser to come back. He might never come back because he's not exactly a big name in Hollywood anymore. No, but, but to be fair, it's it was never meant to be Brendan Fraser. It was the relaunch. It was trying to get yeah, the but Monsters Universe up and running. I think, I think, I think that's running. why it's getting as much criticism as it is. I think when people settle in and realise it's a solid film, Yeah. the overseas sales, the DVD sales, the video on demand sales, will all go up and make the money back for Universal and it'll, people will go into this uni Universal Studios Monsters Universe and be able to enjoy themselves. Because yeah. let's be fair... One of the next ones I think they're doing is League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. A remake. Wait, yes. The original was terrible. It, it ended Sean Connery's career. Yeah, it um, definitely didn't do him any favours. But this time, the reports are they're going much closer to the source material, the comic books. And if they do, good on them. It was a great comic. I love the comic. I'd love to watch a film that went closely with, with the comic rather than just, what is this? Yeah. Um, I'd say... The film as a whole, as Universal's 
first attempt into the Monsters universe properly to get it up. Because what they're basically doing is... Rather than is, a lot of standalone films is what they've done re- yeah, beforehand. They're trying to do... Um, they're basically trying to get in on the Marvel Universe, the DC Universe, yeah. that everyone's sort of thing. Everyone's going to have their own universe now. Yeah, you've got Marvel, you've got um, DC, DC yeah, you've got the Star MCU, Wars. the DCEU, uh, Star Wars is Star Wars. Yeah, um, but that's, this Trek. is their thing into trying to get into something like that, having their own universe, they're doing it with these thingies. I'd say they have got some good films coming up in the pipeline. Um, League of Extraordinary what, Gentlemen, I'd be... We've already seen of Jekyll... And Hyde as played by Russell Crowe. I'd say he they keep already that. made a bigger impact than anyone that's played Jekyll and Hyde in any of their previous yeah, films. I'd, I'd honestly have to say if they keep him with him in the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, that'll be good. I'd be interested to see who else they cast in that. I think that would work out quite well. Um, the Jekyll and Hyde film, hopefully that'll be coming soon. And um, hopefully. The Mummy, I, I honestly have to say, I hope The Mummy makes back the money and everything for Universal Enough and they don't to, stop doing yeah. the second because they leave it wide open for yeah. the second. And they, I they, think it would be a shame if they don't. If this relaunches into another trilogy, A, I hope, don't get me wrong, love Jack Lee as an actor, love The Mummy franchise, but that last one was terrible. <laughs> yeah, um, unfortunately for that, that, that was, but... I think if they bring out a sequel of this one, then at least everybody will be going into it eyes wide open mm. and they know what to expect. And As opposed to another Tom Cruise film, eyes wide shut. Yeah. Um, I mean, you won't. I mean, I walked into this thinking, oh God, it's Tom Cruise, it's going to bring it. And I was pleasantly surprised. Mm. Not the best film ever, but definitely not the worst. Scored solid throughout. I mean, the filming of it, the directing. Everything was brilliant. Tom Cruise played a good part in it, to be fair. Um, not the best of his roles ever, but he did play a good part in it. And all in all, I'd say it was a good film. And I think, though this one may have flopped, I think if they do stick with it, they do bring the sequel out, everybody going in knowing exactly what to expect, I, f- I think the second would be a good success for them. Let's be fair, The Incredible Hulk flopped... And yet, Marvel's going strong. Yeah. A single flop doesn't mean anything. They don't really the moment, to Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. I, I'm honestly saying, as far as this film goes, I hope to God they do bring a sequel out, because I think it'll be a crying shame if they don't. No. Um, wasn't the best film, but I'm saying that. It's one I'd recommend. I'd say go and watch it. Um, even if you're not into this sort of film... It is still it's worth watching. Watch. Yeah. It's and this is probably this would be the only one that I'd say actually, considering it's only scored three and it's not my highest scoring film of the episode. I'd say this is one that it's definitely worth you going to the cinemas. It's definitely worth going watching. I'd say with the cinema atmosphere, the surround sound, the way that it's been filmed, it's definitely best watched in the cinema. Yeah. Um, I think especially because when we were watching it, you, the, there were points when the comic relief cuts through a moment of, oh, 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 and yeah. then comic relief, and everyone in the cinema kind of, not full-on belly laugh, but it's a good little giggle. Yeah. Um, and it breaks the tension, and you just go, okay, I care about the film now. Yeah, this is, this is definitely, I mean, I'm not going to score it any higher than I did. I'm, well, I'm still only no, going to no, score it three, three, but I'm going to say... Go watch it. Yeah. Uh, the only film out of all of these this episode that I'd actually say, whether it's your kind of film normally or not, go and watch it. It's probably one of the first big films that um, Jake has been in. Yep, Jake Johnson. Uh, Jake Johnson's more of a TV comedian actor. Yeah, um, he has done stand-up before. I yep. have seen him do stand-up. Um, New Girl wasn't really my cup of tea, but as an actor, I do think he is funny as a comedian. Uh, sorry, as an actor, I do think he can play good roles. As a comedian, I think he is hilarious. His stand-up is worth watching. And to be fair, putting him with Tom Cruise in this film was a good call. If you can go into watching this film, head into the cinema without... I, I, I'm not going to lie. I think there is someone that could have played it better. 
but I don't think you really want to put TJ Mill with Tom Cruise. No. <laughs> but them two, them two put together, they ended up playing it yeah. well. It's definitely one to go and watch in the cinema. Ignore all the critique and everything yep. that it's got. Go in, go in with an open blank mind. mind, and just think, right, I'm going to sit this, I'm going to watch it, and I'm going to score it on its own juice, yeah. own merits. Ignore the rest of the Mummy franchise and just get into it. I mean, the way that they go about doing this, it is brilliant. It's the first time we've had a female mummy. Yep. So, again, they've gone well, through the... the bride of the mummy in the 30s with Hammer Horror, but yeah. Yeah, out of Universal, it's the first time they've had a female mummy, and to be fair, as a launch into the Monsters universe, I think it's a good thing. Definitely go and watch it, support it a bit, because hopefully if enough people go and watch it, we will have a second, yeah. and I think the second will do a heck of a lot better than the first, because it won't have that stigma yeah. uh, that it's had. But f- for now, that's it from us? Uh, well, um, for the most part, that's it from us. Uh, we're going to be doing this again in a month. Yep. Now, the only things I can honestly say... Between now and next month, we've got the start of Game of Thrones. Yes. Uh, so season the next seven. Month's maybe longer because it'll either be longer or we, after the first episode, we'll uh, have a discussion about that. Yes. Um, there may be a full hour, hour and a half of us talking about Game of Thrones. Yeah. And Game of Thrones theories and what we think might happen. And last time we went into a Game of Thrones conversation, it was about four hours later. Oh, it's gone dark. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think what we'll end up doing with the Game of Thrones, uh, the video that you'll be seeing on YouTube will probably be highly edited. Um, Most for the swearing. <laughs> not only that, uh, for length of time and everything as well. Yeah. Uh, with the podcast, we can keep it going longer. Um, and we don't mind a mature rating on a yeah. podcast. Um, Going to honestly say... Keep an eye out for that. Um, we'll be looking at Game of Thrones. We'll be looking at a couple new films that are coming out next month as well. Um, and the only other thing from me is if you're bored at the minute and you want to watch something, um, I want to recommend uh, if you've got Amazon or Amazon Prime or you've got Amazon TV, jump on and check out American Gods. Yes. Uh, I... The, this is a double recommendation because you mean for me I read the book I understood it straight from the get go when watching the TV series and that's why I enjoyed it you never read the book you had no idea what was going on but it still dragged you in for more yeah now I've honestly got to say it's definitely worth a watch even if you've not read the book if you have read the book like Luke said it does stick close to the book it's very good it's only 8 episodes um, the first season is only eight episodes. Yeah, I'm only up to episode seven. I haven't watched the season finale yet. That happened to uh, on Monday. Yeah. Um, go and check it out. Well worth watching. Little confusing, but bear with it. It explains everything as it goes along. And even though I sat there looking at it thinking, I have not got a clue what is going on. Um, at the end of the first episode, I literally went, Okay, I understood none of that. I have no idea what's going on. But I instantly had to press play again and I binge yeah, watched it, six episodes I, on the trot. See, I watched I watched it along with you after I'd already watched it. Um, I'd, I'd already got up to episode seven before you even start watching You binged it in less than a day. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, you did. You turned around to me and you went, I don't understand anything that's going on. Went, but let's be fair though, you want to press play on the next one, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I binge watched six episodes in one night then watched the seventh the following day and then went why is number eight not here and it only came on on Monday so Saturday and Sunday I, I binge watched um, new episode came out Monday as of filming this at the minute I haven't had a chance to watch it by the time this goes on uh, um, I probably am going to have watched it so keep an eye out for that um, other than that have you any other recommendations to keep them busy? Um, if you really want to go back and watch some old school cinema, I'd say watch Hard Boiled Drunk. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'd say with all the films, everything, one that we might go on about next time if we get a chance. Um, it's a personal favourite of mine, and I personally think, from experience, it is the only one that captures squatty mentality. If you haven't already seen it, check it out. We'll mention it next time. Watch it, leave your comments, get in touch with us on social media, let us know what you think about it. 
but dog soldiers. <laughs> I'm mentioning this because dogs. I'm mentioning this because there is a sequel. Really? They're making. They finally decided that they're going to make the sequel. It hit the news at the end of last week that they are finally going when into production. When the camera starts recording, I'm going to start doing my happy dance. <laughs> yeah, uh, they finally decided they're going into pre-production on the sequel of it, which a lot of people said it was a flop, but not. No. One of my personal favourites. It is the only film that's ever ever caught the British squatty mentality. You've just given me an excuse to watch Dog Soldiers again. Yeah. So it, check it out. We'll go over it next time. We'll give you more on what we know about the sequel coming out. But until then, I've been Ian. I'm Luke. See you later. Ciao. Keep safe and see you in a week. Don't drink and drive. No. And I won't say the other part of that. That's just... No. But anyway, ciao guys. Ciao. See you later.